I'm Jake. I'm Tom. We are VIM TV, Velocities of Music, the best kept secret in music reviews. Today, we're going to review an album from a actually pretty established artist. Yeah. Just one that I've never heard of before reviewing this album. The artist is Shannon Wright, and the album is called In Film Sound. In Film Sound. Uh, initially just caught me off guard because mm -hmm. when I go through my previewing process and Tom as you go through mm -hmm. yours we kind of preview music independently and then yeah. just talk to each other about it mm -hmm. but this is one that actually came up on all music's new release um, list and they recommended it and as I listened to M-Film Sound I was pretty blown away just in the first couple tracks mm -hmm. um, and so I, and I knew it in instantly this is one I had to get Tom to listen to because I knew he would mm -hmm. love it yep. um, and I knew that we had to review it for you guys because anytime there's an artist that I may have not heard about or Tom Tom may have not heard about it, it's probably pretty unknown because let's face it, we listen to a lot of music. Um, and you know, honestly, a lot of you guys out there, you guys review, or I'm sorry, listen and probably review on your own terms mm -hmm. a lot of music that even Tom and I don't hear. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you guys ever hear something that you think, oh, Jake and Tom know about that, we probably don't. So <laughs> let, us, let us know uh, what albums, you know, you're into mm -hmm. from 2013 that maybe we haven't heard about. Um, so in film sound. First thing I noticed about this was how this album just rocked my face off. Mm -hmm. First two tracks, Noise Parade and The Caustic Light, um, are very, very much just guitar-centric tracks. Mm -hmm. How would you, Tom, as a rock expert, how would you describe these so the sound of these of, of Shannon Wright's in-film sound? Well, immediately it reminded me a lot of early PJ Harvey. I think that's that's a comparison that, that's hard to get away from just because PJ Harvey in the early 90s really, uh, really, I mean, at least in my eyes well obviously she had her influences she had her contemporaries she kind of epitomized that just bad girl well more badass girl who could just rock out and and keep up with the guys as far as just intensity and energy and just all-around presentation of that rock sound so that's that's what it made me think of but also this sounded uh, a lot more thought out and just a lot more well that sounds bad not not to imply that PJ Harvey wasn't thought out in any way but I, I can just tell that whereas PJ Harvey had that sound in her earlier stuff Shannon Wright's been around a long time you can tell that this is a seasoned pro who has a very specific approach to her songwriting album structure all of that so just from from an instant I could tell I was dealing with someone who knew what they were doing absolutely and to me to me it came down to the first thing I noticed album craft yeah you know obviously this has a big sound to it a lot of dynamics in every single track a lot of very well composed songs has you know guitar bass and drums as the core and then Shannon writes vocals mm -hmm. um, it kind of has a Nirvana vibe to it yeah. to tell you the truth it is very grungy yeah, yeah. Nirvana slint uh, uh -huh. sunny day real estate are mm -hmm. our favorite yeah. Yeah. Of everything sounds like Sunday Day Real Estate that we like anyways, it seems. Um, but the album structure, she divided this album into two separate pieces. Um, one, the first part is kind of a, a very rockin' part, but then yeah. she even gets in like, um, you know, I already mentioned the first two tracks, but track three, Tax the Patience, almost has a, a waltz feel to it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, track five, Bleed, is this piano ballad that is just heart-wrenching. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just knock, it knocks me off my feet every time I hear it. I'm actually kind of blown away that this guy picked it as a track pick. Really? Yeah. I, it was stuck in my head all the time. Well, it was really well really written. Yeah. It, it's moving as hell. Uh -huh. So that's something that you have to just when you get to it, um, and all of the rock that you hear before then kind of, and then you mm -hmm. just have this quiet piano track that's very personal and intimate. I mean, mm -hmm. it really works. It really is a cathartic moment on the album. Then you have a deluge of just <laughs> yeah. kick-ass experimental rock songs in Meyer, Captive to Nowhere, and Track 8, Surely They'll Tear It Down. Those three tracks right in a row explore a rock sound that is just bombastic, mm -hmm. crafted. It's just, there's every song on this album has this anxiety to it, this tension, mm -hmm. and it's just like bursting at the seams, ready to just blow up into this gigantic ball of sound that's going to hit you in the face. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and not, that was always very evident in all the tracks, but on Meyer, um, tracks six through eight, really, those those tracks really stuck out to me as being like the, the pivotal intensity, intensity moments of mm -hmm. this album. Um, and then track nine, uh, Mason and Hamlin, um, kind of a nice outro to the album, not yeah. too short, not too long, um, just kind of, you know, it's instru instrumental track, it, it kind of different from the rest of the album, kind of gave a nice concluding statement, although it was different from the rest of the album. Mm -hmm. Tom, 
any, any other thoughts on her her lyrics, her vocals? <clears throat> she has kind of an interesting vocal style. Yeah, she does because it's very it's very raw, but okay. that doesn't mean that it's not like I said planned out. Um, th and that's the thing I really liked about this album is that in the production, it has a very gritty, rough presentation, yet when you look at the performance of everything, everything is so specific. That production style doesn't necessarily reflect uh, the, the precision with which everything is performed, and that's what I love about it. You listen to the drums, you listen to some of those guitar lines, the way they all work together, uh, and then the vocals on top of it just beefing everything up. I mean, it it just works, mm -hmm. and and yeah, I found this album just very hard to say anything bad about. <laughs> it, it takes a while to get to know, and, and I think if I had to have a complaint, really, my only complaint is that you know the, the last track, track nine, Mason and Hamlin, like you said, it's a very short outro track. It's a I think, minute forty seven. Yeah, I think it. I think it's good for what it is, but because of it, there's really only like eight really songs on this album, okay. and you know when I think about songs that have only or albums that have only like eight songs on them, I think of stuff like Master of Puppets and, you know, classic albums like that that I feel like there's a lot to live up to when it comes to making a short album with not very many tracks, and the tracks that are on there aren't even very long. I mean, right. I don't even know if any of these break five minutes. No, it's 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 a pretty short album, yeah. but I think it But it accomplishes a little bit. It accomplishes yeah. a little And actually, to me, that that's even a mark of even more impressive um, mm -hmm. than a lot of other shorter albums that are, are still good. Like, yeah. you know, you think of the 30-minute long Sleigh Bells album, Treats. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, true. Yeah, that album made a lot of, a big statement in 30 minutes, but it didn't really accomplish as much as this does. In, true. In, oh, in slightly. I more than I that. totally agree. Like I said, it was a minor complaint. Yeah. I, it's just, and, and it's hardly a complaint because it's almost just me saying I want more. You, you, I want more of this. That's a good point. And, and to me, every single track on this album was mm -hmm. top notch. I yeah. really did have trouble um, finding anything bad to say about this. Mm -hmm. um, other, other than you know. I, I don't know. I mean, you, maybe maybe you want more hooks, but I think it's pretty awesome the way it is. The songs so, are still memorable. Yeah, I mean, I really was just kind of blown away. Every time mm -hmm. I listen to it, I'm just like, I do just want to listen to it again. I can put it on repeat and listen. I have listened to this on repeat a, a few times now, mm -hmm. um, and I just can't get enough of it. I'm actually going to go 92 on this one. Nice. I am actually going to go even 90. I love this album. This is this our is... second favorite album so far this year. And it's deserving. Yes, I mean, it is deserving. The, the only reason I didn't go higher is because, just because, for some reason, it doesn't quite have the comeback appeal for me that it does for you, I know. Like, I love it while I'm listening to it, and the songs get stuck in my head, but I don't find myself wanting to listen to it all the time. And in comparison to 2013 albums, you know, Cult of Luna would be the only album we're scoring above. Exactly. At this point in the year, and honestly, between the two, I, I think, Cult of Luna just has a slight more comeback uh -huh. quality. So it's kind of funny. Our two favorite albums so far this year have been rock albums yeah. at this point. So Pretty cool. um, it, it's an interesting year at Velocities of Music for us anyways. Hopefully you guys have found some really mm -hmm. good albums out there that you've uh, been loving so far in 2013. Because we're getting, you know, we got a fourth of 20, or a third of 2013 already in the mm -hmm. books. Yeah. Um, working on a half. So a, a <clears throat> lot of great music has come out. Hopefully you guys will take the time to listen to In Film Sound. Tell us what you think at www.velocities.com velocitiesofmusic.com or youtube.com slash velocitiesofmusic. As always, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and let us know that album that you've been loving from 2013. I'm Jake. I'm Tom. And we are VIMTV, moving music critique forward. So you broke us all down.